So welcome to you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, like you said, I'm Luisa from System76. I've been there for a couple of years now. Uh, we're really excited about our new venture, uh, building the open desktop. We just moved our entire team into our manufacturing facility, and it's a really exciting time for us. Um, and actually, that's why we're so excited to talk to you guys today, because this is the first time we get to share where we're at and what we're working on with the public. Um, so I will have all the questions and answers at the end. There's going to be plenty of time for that. So if at any point in the presentation you find a slide interesting or find information interesting and you want to share it, you can tag at System76 or use the hashtag LibreDesktop. And for those of you who don't know who we are, System76 is a Linux computer manufacturer powered by a close working team of extremely talented open source enthusiasts. Our com computers and operating system are designed for scientists, developers, and makers. This is a large part of who our customer base is already. We've been uh, serving the Linux community for about 13 years now. And we believe the computer and operating system are the most powerful tools ever created. These are the starting tools for a health scientist to identify cancer cell tissues, for a um, rocket scientist to calculate space trajectory, or for a roboticist to program their robots, so it's extremely important that we make sure that these tools are really powerful and enable them to do their work well and extremely efficient. Um, and we believe that the best way to uh, support them is by building the open desktop. And as I go through the slides, we'll talk about uh, building the open desktop from the inside and out. So that's the operating system, the software, the firmware, the hardware, the chassis. Um, some of our challenges, successes, and R&D findings that we are really uh, excited to share with you. And then manufacturing and how some of the implications of that, um, what that means. And uh, yeah. So as I go through these slides, I would like to paint a picture for you um, when we talk about the open desktop and where that can take us. And I want you to imagine two things. So the first thing is I want you to imagine a future where open source hardware and software exceed the expectations of those who once only trusted proprietary. So in this future, anything that's proprietary is seen as subpar in comparison to anything that is open source. And I think there's one industry that does that well, um, microbrew versus craft brew. So you have mass-produced beer, Budweiser, or in Spain, Cruz Campo, versus craft beer. And when you compare these two, I want you to think about the quality of the beer, the flavor of the beer, the craftsmanship of the beer, um, all the attention and love and care and detail that goes in craft brewing in comparison to mass-produced beer. Now, there, there's one thing I think really stands out between the two when you compare them, and that is there is a level of receptability that's involved in craft brew in comparison to mass-produced beer. And what I mean by that is um, there is almost a regular dialogue or a conversation that the craft brewer is having with their customers and trying to identify how they responded to the beer, if they like the flavor, is, the, is there a style of beer they like, um, is there a seasonal beer that they can try to pursue. Um, and there, I think this is extremely applicable to open source technology and making sure that you're tapping into your customers regularly and understanding, you know, here's what I'm working on, is there a way to improve it, what are they responding well to, what are they really asking for um, from us in order to improve the technology that we're working on. Um, the second thing I want you to imagine is a future that fosters an engagement in curiosities. Uh, there's actually a really awesome quote that I read and I want to share it with you guys. Um, and it, there is a research paper and in this research paper they start with this quote and it's an interview with the Wright brothers, the pioneer of the airplane. And a friend of the, of the um, Wright brothers said, to them, you will forever be a perfect example of what it's like to go really far in life despite having any advantages. And the Wright brothers responded with, the greatest thing in our favor was growing up in a family where there was always encouragement to pursue our curiosity. And that's really powerful. In this uh, same study, in this research study, they found that uh, the personality trait of curiosity was the single most differentiating factor that enabled somebody to move up in social classes to overcome life traumas, to 
become an entrepreneur or to make a mark in history. So it wasn't GPA, it wasn't intelligence, it wasn't IQ, it was the pursuit of curiosity. So we feel that open source has a powerful and important role to provide better tools that enable the curious to pursue those curiosities, to foster a world where everyone is empowered to, to innovate. So FOSS is one portion of this. So for example, if you have the desire to explore space, you have access to software that allows you to explore space whenever you want. Um, on the other hand, say you're over that, and you say, you know what, I want to try something else, and I'm really into 3D animation. I'm curious about it, and I want to give this a try. That's great. So these are two really strong and incredible tools in um, open source that allow you to pursue your curiosities on the software side. Now, when it comes to hardware, I want to use uh, cameras as an example. Um, so 150, 200 years ago, you would probably spend the equivalence of today a couple thousand dollars to purchase the camera equipment. Um, that's the camera, the materials, the chemicals, but you also had to call a specialist to take a photo. And this specialist spent several years specializing in this field, understanding how to get the right lighting, how to uh, mix all the chemicals together to get the right kind of portrait, um, they understood cropping and framing. There's a lot of technical expertise that went into this, and not everybody had access to do this. And so what we want to get to a point of is where we can... Um, so cameras today, for example, um, anyone now has the access to this tool to take a photo. And there's not a, a lot of uh, experience that goes into it. I mean, while not everyone's a great photographer, everyone is a photographer in their own right. But they have a powerful ability to communicate to express, to share a story. And that's really, really powerful. And this is the, um, the progression of communication. But when you apply it to technology and the progression of technology, that is extremely powerful. So here you weren't able to uh, take a photo. You had to have a specialist. But now you have a camera right now in your pocket. Um, and click of a button. And that's it. And then click of a button, you can change the filter. So let's say if you wanted to be innovative, and you had an idea for something in your house that you wanted to improve, at the click of a button, you say, okay, I don't like how I, my sprinkler system, it could be better. Um, I want it to be automated, click of a button. And I want to put a filter on it. Maybe I want it to sprinkle with some fancy dance, who knows, I don't know. So you click of a button, but same thing, there's not um, an inhibitor in the same way that cameras are now. You can just go for it. So two things, again, open source hardware and software exceed the expectations of anything proprietary and a future where everyone engages in their curiosity simply because we are creating technology that enables them and empowers them to do so. Now when you combine these two together, you have an open future in which all great things are crafted by friends and neighbors. So actually, Carl, our CEO, gave me a really good example, um, 3D printers. So imagine no longer needing to go to the store because your neighbor specializes in making and 3D printing incredible shoes. And when I think about applying this on a grand scale, I think, okay, garage sales. When you go to a garage sale now, it's your neighbor selling their consumer goods that they're no longer using. But think about it instead where all of your neighbors are curious and they are encouraged to pursue their curiosities. They're innovating all the time. They have access to these tools. And so now when you go to a garage sale, it's a garage sale of their inventions. And everybody's selling their inventions. Now remember, these inventions are open source. So that means they're far better than anything you'd purchase at the store. And we believe that we'll get to this future by building the open desktop. So I want to, I'll, I'll get more about the open desktop a little bit later. Um, so let's talk about some of the internals and where we're at on that side of it. Um, Pop! OS is our operating system that we released last year, and the operating system is based off of GNOME. Now, the operating system is the most important customer interaction. This is the interface that our customers are using when they're calculating their space trajectory or identifying cancer cell tissues, and so it's extremely important that we're making sure that the operating system is uh, fast and powerful and enables them to be extremely efficient. So I'm going to walk through just a few of the features that enable them to be efficient in their uh, work. One of the first things we did was we wanted to make sure that the operating system was driven by keyboard navigation. 
The shortcuts were created by our developers and engineers in-house to optimize their workflow. These are the shortcuts that they use every day. Another feature is performance management. So one of those is uh, making sure that you get a more accurate battery reading, and so you're able to tell how much battery life you have left. I'm not sure why the font is weird, but um, the other feature that you have is being able to toggle between battery or between a power, power performance profile. So, for example, you are maybe traveling on a transatlantic flight to Spain for Guadalajara. You are probably going to want to opt for battery life and extending your battery life as much as possible. On the other hand, you might want to maximize your CPU for um, high or for heavy multi-thread compiling, and you would want to be able to have four different So you have three different battery lives to, or three different power profiles to choose between, depending on the workload that you need at that moment. And then, of course, the do not disturb, which uh, enables you to disable any pop-ups so that you have no distractions and you can remain focused. And the installer is one of our most recent launches um, in April. Um, there's actually a lot of features in the installer, but for the sake of the presentation, what the installer enables you to do is it simplifies the installation process um, and installs extremely fast so that you can get to your project right away. Uh, the Pop Shop is personally one of my favorite features within Pop OS. It's our curated app center. So when we launched uh, Pop OS last year, what one of the first things we did is we surveyed users and we said, okay, what are some of the apps that you use every day, regularly? And we took the apps that applied gen generally to everybody, and we only kept those apps and removed everything else. So all the bloatware was gone. Um, anything that had tracking on it was removed. Now this meant that the operating system was extremely light and extremely fast, and it only had the applications that you needed. On the other hand, we have uh, our customers do powerful things, so they might need uh, the latest NVIDIA drivers or CUDA or some of these applications that enable them to communicate, but they might not apply to everyone. These are curated apps that are kept up to date regularly by our engineers. And so you can find these in the Pop Center. So if you are curious to see what some of the other features are, you can go to system76.com slash pop and see what else there is. There's videos there, there's screen grabs, you can Download the operating system, or if you're not committed yet and you want to just demo it, you can do that too. Um, so POP is just a year old, which means that now that we have the aesthetics correct and we have some of the architecture and the feel and what we're going for, now it's time to dig a little deeper and do more user testing so that we can continue to push the platform forward. Now, Linux is a success story in driving openness and software functionality. This Linux story is a driver of inspiration for us, and our goal is to get hardware in that same space. So let's talk a little bit more about where we are with hardware. By building an open computer and leading the foray into reaching this envisioned future that I spoke of earlier, we will open source components bit by bit. Eventually, Intel and others will join the community effort, ushering a new era of open hardware. So remembering to persevere despite any hurdles and remembering to persevere because we're so inspired by the Linux story and, and what you guys are working on. Um, and remembering and keeping in mind how important it is to build towards this future of having um, open source hardware and software um, you know, supersede anything else that, that proprietary creates. It's important for us to keep that in mind and persevere forward. And we love challenges. We have a very talented and creative team, and we are excited to take this endeavor, and largely because we have such a strong, great community. So think about having open source embedded controllers, firmware, and Libre keyboard designs and software. There are reasons for us to be optimistic. So where we are at today is, I'm going to have some water. Okay, so we, like I said, moved our entire manufacturing team and uh, our corporate team all together one building. Uh, and that's really energizing. It's very exciting. We are prototyping. We're getting more and more of our uh, manufacturing equipment. Um, we are running a lot of R&D tests to figure out how we can optimize the customer experience. So for us, our engineering challenge is to design an open source computer to run components at their maximum performance constantly without throttling. 
Now we still have customers we need to answer to as we uh, release this open desktop, and so making sure that we have the best performance possible and a, a positive open source experience is extremely important. The first steps will be to start by replacing embedded controllers with free and open source firmware to control functionality like the thermals inside of the computer. Now we've already found some interesting things with our thermal testing. So as you know, everything matters in a cooling system design, and that includes the size and shape of the ventilation holes, the distance of the fan from the heat exchanger, the amount of cool air intake, volume of the air, and the path of the air as it moves through the computer. All of that matters and it makes a big impact on the computer's performance, or on the CPU's performance. So we tested different methods of CPU cooling, comparing liquid cooling, open air fans, and heat pipes, and we found that heat pipes were actually the most effective. These were the most efficient at cooling the CPU and the quietest. This means that it's extremely important for the OEM to design a proper cooling method within the system. It means that if you have an 8086K CPU, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're having 8086K performance. Uh, this is just one example of some of the findings that we are really looking forward to releasing once we have the open desktop ready. This along with some of the CAD work, the firmware, the darter board, all of this we're extremely happy to release to you guys and um, share with you. And we will be releasing this at fail.io. So if you are interested in receiving updates, that is the link to receive updates on the open desktop. We are expecting uh, the desktop to be ready sometime in October, I believe. Um, and that's the date that we're working towards. And for those of you who have followed our campaigns in the past, know that we like to do things uh, creatively. We like to make sure that we're being interactive and sharing a story. And um, we're actually pretty excited about this campaign. So uh, I will now open up the floor to questions. And actually, Carl Rochelle, our CEO here, is really close to the manufacturing team. So I might have him step in if anyone has specific manufacturing questions. Hi, everybody. So if any of you have any questions, uh, raise your hand. I'll come by and uh, give you your, the microphone. So you mentioned scientists in the beginning of the talk. Um, besides the OS, are you uh, already concentrating on shipping tools for scientists? Uh, yes, I think um, next week. So that's one of the that, one of the reasons that we're working on Pop OS uh, is that we can move a little bit faster than uh, uh, than uh, some of the uh, constraints that we work with. So with Pop OS, we ship the NVIDIA 396 drive, which works for CUDA 9.2. This week we just about finished up packaging CUDA 9.2, uh, CUD and, and, and TensorFlow. So I believe next week um, all the, the latest uh, machine learning tools will be available, available to the device. Hi, thanks for being here. Um, so Pop OS, uh, like uh, Ubuntu and, and some of the other um, mainstream operating systems, uh, there's not a lot of GNOME branding inside of the operating system. Um, what's your relationship with GNOME? I guess um, the patches that you you committed, the changing of the power profiles. Are there plans to, to circle it back in? I guess what is what's the back and forth? Right. Well, we've been at this a year, so we're just kind of getting our <laughs> getting our footing really, um, and that's uh, one of the reasons that, uh, uh, that I'm glad we're here because. I think there are some common pain points that we have with our customers that might be common with uh, uh, no users in general. And so I'd like to explore those areas. Um, Multi-monitor is one that um, uh, I think it's 57% of our customers use multiple monitors and, and uh, we'd love to improve that, that experience. And, and try to turn it in a way that the uh, user testing is, is open and accessible to be um, uh, uh, reviewed and, uh, and uh, we can build consensus around what what a uh, good approach rather than going on our own path and moving one way. And I want to add to that one of our goals is to be extremely collaborative with the memory repository. You know, we have already collected user surveys and then a couple of focus groups from the community to figure out what tools they're using. That was one example. Another example is in super fans, your uh, annual events, we fly out 12 people to come to our uh, all this year with the manufacturing to look at our products. And also, there's a roundtable discussion when I say that happens. Back and hear from them what they're looking forward to and what kind of features they'd like to see. Yep. And another piece I want to add to that is uh, 
um, you know, we talked about having more hack fest too, so working with the film and Canonical and which example, but anyway, working together with all of the other OSs and figuring out, okay, what are some of your pain points, what projects are you working on, are we working on anything similarly, okay, let's see if we can get something together and align on our projects. Yeah, we feel like we have a unique perspective in that uh, over 90% of our business and, is in it. And uh, the work we do is the, the Linux desktop. So we're not an enterprise company. We, uh, we have services. Uh, uh, everything is uh, is about the Linux desktop for us. Uh, and because of that, with the, uh, I think we've contributed a lot to uh, the perspective from that point of view. And also, sorry, one thing I'm really excited about doing is uh, releasing some of their findings from our you know, our surveys and user testing and those um, hopefully sharing it with um, the other OSs to see if they find value with me that information. Um, and I don't know how much this is, but one thing I'd like to do is work with Michael Larable more because he runs his own user testing and we can see, you know, we can get our information so that it's not it's as unbiased as possible. Actually. Hi. Um, my, I, it's more of a comment or I think what would be great for GNOME is to share. Um, I know System76 has customer support, so there's daily calls uh, for support of, of Pop! OS. Uh, one thing I know that designers and GNOME desktop is we don't have, we have to filter a lot of noise, at least from the internet, at least from bugs, but you have real data that comes in because real people are calling and so that's something worth sharing. I think it would be it would be great to see to share that kind of experience that you see from your through your customer service. Right. Yeah. So we're uh, so as Lisa said, we're going to start with something like static as an operating system and doing some of the features that were uh, building in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our customers needed uh, or requested full description of the box, which is one of the major uh, reasons that we invested in the install. So it enables us as an OEM to. Uh, to deliver a hardware full description where the key is generated and the customer receives it instead of from the website. Um, the next step for us is, uh, is user testing, uh, uh, surveys, analysis, synthesis, uh, determining those areas that we can improve the desktop and move forward. And I think that's, that's going to be a great place for us to share the data and, uh, and hopefully work together on, on the software so we can work just improving the home and improving the desktop itself. So, um, question more on the manufacturing side. So, if you buy a laptop, and if you are like, like from a weird country like I am, you need to have a physically different keyboard layout, so it's mechanically different. And at least on the website, there didn't seem to be a possibility to change how that works. So, how big of a like thing would be to, to add to the option to have a different keyboard layout, or is that just too niche to be profitable? Uh, we've done that. Uh, we've done that in the past, and the, uh, <coughs> the balance is always how much demand there are for different keyboard layouts, and whether that's uh, whether it's sustainable for us to make batch of this. Uh, it's, uh, it's something we're always looking at. And I'm not sure. Uh, like, uh, it's, a, it's a tricky challenge to solve. Hello? All right, so there we go. Any other questions? Oh. <laughs> so, uh, is there any more questions? Do you plan to get flat pack support in Pop Shop? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, does Pop OS have any sort of enterprise component back end or? Uh, if a company 
wanted to deploy System 76 laptops throughout their their small business or large business. Um, I guess how would you like how would you handle user management and mass deployment and installing? Uh, so um, uh, so we don't from System 76, but there's landscape from Canonical and it's supported in Pop OS. And um, uh, I guess uh, on an aside for that, uh, we're, we're a company that's not really going after putting 10,000 computers in uh, power plants or something, or, or, a, or a major corporation. What we're really looking, what we're interested in doing is uh, supplying tools for creators within those organizations to uh, 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 to you know to work on their projects. Uh, we're not into the high volume type of uh, deployments. Any questions? Uh, my question is, uh, what is your relation with the, the, the hardware manufacturers who are, who are collaborating with uh, and also to achieve uh, the, the open desktop? Uh, so what we're, where we're moving from is a place where we have um, uh, partners that are uh, mostly in, in Asia that are producing products for us and then uh, and then we're uh, adding our uh, our engineering and expertise to ensure that Linux is working properly out of the box. Uh, what we're moving we're moving from that to a place where we are doing the design and manufacturing in house. So the the first desktop that we ship will be um, entirely internally designed, internally manufactured, and uh, and I think the most unique uh, characteristic of that is is that those uh, those hardware designs will be open source. So the CAD the firmware. Um, uh, the PCB designs, um, uh, all those components that we're uh, that we're building into the desktop will be open. Any more? All right, thank you, everyone. <laughs>